Sasa <laughs> Diongo.
we see the constitution of the Republic of Uganda, our role, the director of public prosecution, basically is by boss. Uh, that's why I call her bossy bossy. So when she comes here, we are basically trying to agree how can we legally secure the, the people of Uganda. So I'm very excited, first of all, to host you here at CID headquarters. And we look forward to, to, to a, lot of, a lot of conversations in these two days. So Afande IGP, as you come here, just know that this is your home. And we are very happy to host all these people from the entire country. Now, from the program and the briefing we have given you, you realize we have quite a number of discussions. Some will range from corruption to terrorism to how we can fight criminality in general. And the basic really reason for us to meet here today is to see how best we can realign our work to supporting the ongoing socioeconomic transformation of our people. There is no way we are going to continue operating outside what the people of Uganda want. And by us spending our time here today, we hope we shall come out with concrete uh, lessons, concrete steps on how best we can move forward together. As we do that well, then the criminal justice system will be safe because it starts with us and then the judiciary comes in and where we fail or we succeed, we pass over the problem to prisons. So clearly, this is a historical moment and we look forward to having candid and honest discussions. Of course, we still have some challenges here and there, and that is part of progress. So we shall take stock of where we have achieved and where we have failed and what we can do better. With those remarks, uh, I want to take... PP, CID in the Social Economic Transformation of Uganda. Uganda is one of the East African countries with a record of significant economic growth over the past decade. However, this growth has slowed down the last few years, which is among other reasons, heavily, of course, due to the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. Furthermore, in October 2022, the World Bank released a report which showed that 4.2% of the Ugandan population is estimated to be in extreme poverty. So our theme is really on point. The theme, therefore, seeks to explore how the ODPP and the CID can effectively and efficiently work together to foster socioeconomic transformation in Uganda. The meeting is an opportunity to discuss the current and future role of ODPP and CID in countering socioeconomic challenges by equipping investigators and prosecutors with knowledge and skills in the investigation and prosecution of criminal cases, while of course sharing best practices in handling criminal matters. That's why we bring you together. Please mix, mix, and mix. Even this sitting arrangement is not very good. People should be mixed up. The ODPP and CID have a special duty in this country to protect society from the criminal behavior. The standard of service expected of us is really high, which is consequently places us on us the duty to take reasonable steps to ensure that services are effective, they're fair, they're transparent, and that we are actually skilled and up to date in addressing emerging challenges related to crime in Uganda, particularly the socioeconomic challenges. That is why we have dedicated these two days to equip you, our prosecutors, and our investigators with the requisite modern and adequate investigative and prosecutorial tools to contribute to the social economic transformation in Uganda. 
As you may have seen the, from the program, there is a diversity of topics to equip you with the necessary knowledge and skills to professionally and effectively manage criminal cases in your respective capacities. This meeting, of course, is only two days, and it cannot be exhaustive of all the knowledge you need to acquire. However, I call upon you to take it very seriously and use it as a platform to learn and share your experiences. And of course, we expect that when you go back to your stations, you will definitely trickle this down to the people under you. So you are just here, we're just trying to give you, it is like uh, giving you a test of what you can do. You are now going to expand it, and we shall definitely come to the field to see how far what you learned in the two days, what you have done with it. The presenters and panelists are also going to share their long earned experiences with you, and together we can craft better ways of delivering the best services to the people. I am confident that these discussions will be of inordinate influence to enable us to support our nation, Uganda. In addition, I believe this meeting will give us all an opportunity to enhance the three Cs, the coordination, the communication, and of course, the cooperation between the office of the DPP and the OC, the, the CS. Theme, the contribution of office of the director, office ODPP, stroke CID, in the socioeconomic transformation of Uganda. And uh, I want to observe that this is quite timely and at this juncture I also want also to observe that this is a very big achievement as far as I'm concerned. Even if you just came here and sat and greeted each other and went away, for me it would have been a very, very huge statement. But now that you are going beyond this, I'm short of the real words to, to use to thank Honorable Director of Public Prosecutions, Director CID, and all my colleagues here this, this morning. To me, this is a very, very huge achievement and allow me to again thank you. And the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions under the 1995 Constitution of the Republic of Uganda are both charged with the responsibility of maintaining law and order. Therefore, the interconnectedness of responsibilities and functions between the CID and the ODPP demand that the two institutions must collaborate and strengthen partnership in order to achieve their objective of contributing towards law and order, but by extension towards supporting the development of this country. I must emphasize that the above collaboration is more desired now in view of the ever-evolving criminal syndicates and transnational crimes such as cyber crime, money laundering, terrorism, human and drug trafficking, among others. Therefore, as you deliberate on the various topics I have seen on the program, we expect you to review the ongoing tasks, share experiences, and identify the notable issues and gaps to enhance performance. I'm also happy you will discuss more on the fight against corruption. The general public has been frustrated that we go for small fish. But of recent, we see this trend changing 
and we shall support your efforts to ensure a corrupt free society. I also wish to remind the participants to ensure professionalism, integrity, and protection of human rights during the performance of your duties. It's now my pleasure to declare this meeting officially opened and wish you fruitful discussions for God and my country. What are our, priority, our priorities as investigators? I just want to draw us to a quick test that we are doing right now. It's a terrorism case where money was being sent from the DRC through crypto, the operator in Zambia, the money goes to Tanzania, and then it gets to Kenya and Uganda to perform acts of terrorism. Now, if you look at the nature of uh, the nature in which these criminals, uh, transnational organized crime operates. It calls for a number of mechanisms to ensure effective and efficient systems to prevent, detect, but also to investigate crime. Now, what are some of the mechanisms that we are looking at in combating or investigating transnational organized crimes? We are um, just to draw back to our theme for today, the coordination, that should actually be point number one. We should enhance cooperation, because we as investigators, we can't do much without the collaboration of the DPP. And in collaboration, we are emphasizing the prosecution-guided investigations. Currently, what we are doing, as far as investigating transnational organized crimes are concerned, we bring the DPP on board right from the inception, because most of these cases emanate from actual intelligence. They are always built from the intelligence world, and then we eventually turn it into evidence. So even as we still have evidence, I mean intelligence, we bring our prosecutors on board, we sit together in one room and we discuss, because the nature of uh, TOCs is quite sophisticated in nature. So that's one mechanism we've adopted. Then, besides the, co the collaboration between the CID and the DPP, we are bringing in other agencies, but also other stakeholders. I told you the case we are doing currently, it emanated from Congo all the way to Zambia, Tanzania, and then Kenya involved. So we are also collaborating with the stakeholders at regional level. Our teams actually, as I speak now, they so far visited Zambia, they've gone to Tanzania, and soon they will be going to Kenya. So our coordination is beyond borders because the crime itself is beyond borders. And then when you look at TOCs, the criminals involved or the syndicates are so organized and quite sophisticated. They've embraced technology. We all hear what they call the dark web, the cyberspace. So our criminals are also embraced to that. The English say, when you look into the abyss, the abyss also looks into you. We are busy preparing as investigators and prosecutors, but the bad guys are also preparing. They are quite sophisticated. So what does this call for? Another mechanism then is to embrace the science and the technology. The direct uh, forensic services is here. In most of our cases, we've had either communication through uh, corrupted uh, ways, they are always, because um, there are so many, when you look at the communication channels these days, I mean the media space, there are so many, and the criminals have embraced them. So we've, uh, one of the mechanisms is really to embrace the technology and the science in our investigations. We also just need surveillance. We are talking about, uh, so, uh, about science. Because these people are sophisticated, there is no way you're going to investigate them, but you're not so in, uh, doing the surveillance on them. And the surveillance can be before you even arrest, 
at the time of arrest when you're interviewing them. But even when they go to prison, we've extended our surveillance. We've had cases that are, not in, uh, that are in court, and I may not specifically mention them, but where we've had suspects trying to manipulate our cases. So we also follow up, even when they're in prison, to see what they are planning. Because like I said, that they are sophisticated, they never stop planning. We've also, we've also, we are also ensuring accountability through internal oversight and mechanism. Our chief guest was talking about corruption this morning. Are our teams and investigators up to the task? So we've set up mechanisms. As far as TOCs are concerned, instead of allocating the case file to one investigator or two, this time around we are forming up teams because once you form up a team, each investigator has a unique quality. But also in the teams, we ensure that there is effectiveness in, in conducting investigations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we can all agree that we still have a challenge in our laws and uh, some of the issues that come up during investigations. Again, in the recent, we've seen where you're investigating, especially the high-profile cases, and the 